It's not just professional models and actresses that need headshots for their portfolios. We all use headshots with our social media profiles. You might need one for the About Us page, for the work website. There are many, many uses. Driving licenses, and of course your granny's probably going to want one to stick on the mantelpiece and go, oh, isn't he lovely? But I thought it'd be interesting to come out and see if we can show you how to shoot some low-tech headshots without the use of studio equipment and lighting and all that kind of stuff. Well, remember Abby? Abby? You remember Abby, don't you? Yeah, you've met Abby before in our mobile phone film, I'm sure. Your agent got in touch and said they wanted some more headshots for you, didn't they? And so Abby said, can you come and take some of me, please? So, of course, yeah, and we thought we'd just sort of share it with you. We're just going to do them around Abby's house. So I thought we'd do a few do's and don'ts and just show you some good places to get some nice headshots with some nice low-tech techniques. So let's begin in the garden. Lead on, mate. And the sun's come out. Hang on, Abby. So, what are we going to do? Well, well, the sun is out. Let's grab a camera. The first thing I would say you don't want to do is something like this. So look at the light on Abby's face. Look, she's got all sunny bits all over her. So if I just go like that, with absolutely no thought, you've got a horrible looking picture with really ni nasty, sort of harsh light going on. Bright highlights. And the background is all kind of messy. Now this is a great environment and I wanted to do it here because there's lots going on. I mean, your folks are doing at the house, aren't they? So, you know, there's loads of stuff all over the place. I just want to show you that it is possible. The place to start is to make sure your model is attractive. <laughs> That's a horribly thing. <laughs> Which of course isn't a problem with Abby. No, it doesn't matter, right? But the, when I say, what I'm saying is the first most important thing to do is to make sure your model looks great. Now, for example, headshots for your purposes you don't want lots and lots of makeup and stuff do you but look for things like hair maybe a hair caught in some makeup hair going across an eye check for things like that give us a little like that. cool i'm looking for lipstick on teeth these are all sort of things just to look out for because it's easily overlooked and then when the picture comes back it's like oh i wish i'd noticed that so how would we begin to take the picture so you're all looking great everything's cool I couldn't help teasing you. <laughs> <laughs> you should see the mess around that's been going on off camera. Lorna's been in stitches a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, so where can we find a good location? We want to find somewhere where the light is going to work. Harsh sunlight isn't so great. So how about backlight? Well, Abby's actually in some quite nice light here, looking at her face right now. So let's have a little look and an experiment with that before the sun goes in. I'm going to set my lens longer. I'm going to use a wide aperture for a shallow depth of field, so I can only go to 70 millimetres with this lens. I'm just going to see what we can do. But the light is actually quite nice on Abby's face. The thing is, I think, is the background. So if I come in like that, and the light's just gone. But we kind of got it. You can see Abby's got sort of panda eyes, there's dark areas under her eyes. The background is still a distraction, so it isn't going to work that well. Now the sun has gone down and back out again, this is going to be fun. So what we need to do is to block that down light because that's what's causing the black areas underneath Abby's eye. We also need to find somewhere where we can lose the background. How can we lose the background? Think about it. Long lens, narrow field of view, shallow depth of field. So all we need to do is to find something neutral. Should we go and have a look around the backyard? Yep. Come on then, let's go and see because I think I spotted somewhere. There's a little spot around here in the backyard that I've spotted. Now you might be sort of looking around and thinking, but it's such a confined space. We've got this area kind of in here and it's all a little bit kind of busy. There's lots of sun here, but I really like this area. Why? Well, watch the light on my face. Lorna might have a bit of a problem exposing. Can you come around this way, Lorna? There we go. If you look, light on my face there, I've got that bright stuff. But as I move back under here, that is blocking the downlight, and I've got much more even light on my face. And that's going to be even better on Abby, because she's prettier than me. So, Abby, come and get into the light here. So what am I thinking? How am I going to lose 
all this kind of stuff that's going on around here. Well, it's as I said, long lens, sh narrow field of view, shallow depth of field. What am I thinking? I don't, are you, can you see around this pole, Lorna? I know it's a bit of a nuisance. The light on Abby's face is really, really nice. So what I'm thinking is how we can lose some background. Now the brickwork here could be a little bit of a distraction, but we've got this door over here. So I'm gonna close that because with the shallow depth of field, with a wide aperture on the long lens, I should be able to lose that. And, and we don't want anything in the background that's gonna cause a distraction. It's a headshot. We want the focus to be on the person's face and head. So, <clears throat> we have a strategically placed little table. I'm just going to move these things out of the way. I'm quickly going to show you the impact of, of the focal length. So I've got a 50 mil going on here. If I just get close to Abby and shoot like that, and again, because we had a wee blinky, it looks like that, which isn't particularly brilliant because we've got too much of the outside, the, the background, what's going on around Abby. If I extend the focal length, try not to fall over, and then just kind of shoot like that with a longer focal length, you can see it is a much, much nicer look when you flick between the two. The light's really nice, the background's good. We've got our test shot kind of ready to go. Now we just wanna just get Abby so she's looking at her absolute wonderfulness best. So, Abby, let your shoulders relax. Just kind of flop them a bit, yeah? But I would like you to lean forward. You use the table just to kind of bring yourself forward a little without hunching those shoulders, okay? Notice Abby's shoulders are at sort of, I'm gonna be over there where this pole is, okay? But Abby's shoulders are just kind of facing off to where my left would be. And it's just a little bit more attractive, but I'm gonna get Abby's face turned straight towards me. I'm gonna use the door as the background the focal length is going to be whatever it needs to be to get that shot and isolate Abby. We don't want distractions in the background because that takes away from her face. <clears throat> so first, I'm a bit taller, which isn't good because the looking down look is really quite nice for this sort of shot. So that's it. Let those shoulders relax a bit, Abby. I've zoomed my lens. I'm using an FX full frame lens on a DX sensor because I know you're going to ask and I have it set to about 120 millimeters. This is a 2.8 lens, so I'm gonna use my widest aperture to ensure the shallowest depth of field. Camera that way up, obviously, because that's the way up Abby is. Let's line that shot up and take one. So that's really cool, Abby. That's nice, let's see a little bit of big eye. Come on, <laughs> there you go. That's awesome. Put your chin up just a little, and one like that. You can see that light there is so much nicer than what we had around the front of the house using the sunshine. And you can't see any of the clutter behind. One other little thing that's worth a try, excuse me one moment, I, we have over here a third party involved here. We've got Aidy, Abby's friend, who's going to be Reflector Girl lately, later, but actually hang on a tick, Aidy, because this one I'm gonna get Abby to work with. Because if you don't have someone to help you, you can use a reflector. Now this is a silver one, it's a bit harsh, but in the shade, it can work quite well. If we, Lorna, can you get the camera onto Abby's face? Get, the, get, get across so we can see Abby's face. As I turn this reflector, you should be able to see, look at that, can you see the light change on Abby's face? Now that's probably a little bit harsh and I'm overdoing it just so that you can see the effect. But if we put this reflector in here and just kind of scoop and bend, there we go like that that's nice that's good about there thanks abby that reflector is just scooping up a little bit of available light and pushing it back in under abby's chin and it will be a really nice look the long lens is going to just scoot past the edge of the reflector so we've just got abby cool nice one abby so abby is being model and reflector assistant in this case right what is our exposure because that's going to be the next thing you're going to ask me I have got, I'm using aperture priority, I have got an ISO of 250, so I've got nice colours and fine grain. That is giving me a shutter speed of, 
you've got to do this looking through the viewfinder a 750th of a second so I know I won't get camera shake the lens is fast enough and I've got a VR lens which reduces vibration so our exposure is all set our ISO is all set Abby is all set the reflector is all set the background's all set let's do it that's a great look Abby awesome and put your chin down a little more eyes a little wider that's quite nice with a raised eyebrow and a little smile there we go. Now, obviously doing this for Abby, I would take several more shots, but I just want to show you the technique. But what would you do if it wasn't a really hot, sunny day like we have today, and you were going to have to shoot inside? Let's go and find out. And back in the kitchen. I like the kitchen because there's lots and lots and lots of good light going on in here. These windows are really good. Now, even though the sun is facing them, We've got these blinds. Now, if we had Abby straight in the sunlight, it would be too much. Watch the exposure go crazy, probably. Here we go. <clears throat> you can see that it might be a little bit too much. But this is a really great little spot right here. Because of the light that's going to come through these windows, and because we can move backwards and forwards, so sort of like back here, it's a very different wraparound. Abby, come back a little. There we go. It's a very different sort of wraparound light here, go forward again, right next to the window, to kind of where it is there. You should be able to see there's quite a difference on Abby's face. Thanks, mate. Um, background. Now we've got, looking through here, obviously, lots of stuff going on, which we don't want. I mean, right through back here in the hall, we've got coats hanging up. You know, this is a normal house. Easy, isn't it? Just close that door. We've immediately got a plain background. Now, at that point, you could play around with doing things like hanging a sheet of white paper or coloured card or coloured paper, bed sheet, something like that. If it's a bed sheet, make sure it's ironed so it's not rippled, otherwise it'll just look like a bed sheet hung over a door. But that would then, you can change the colour of the background. So we've got some great, free, cool light going on in here. So, Abby, we have kind of rehearsed this, obviously, viewers. If you kind of, somewhere there, okay... I quite like the light on your face like that, but I'm just going to soften it. I just want to move these across. Ah, look. Can you, <clears throat> Lorna, can you see on Abby's face? If I just, if you watch the light on Abby's face as I move these, look at that change. Can you see that change? So we've got a side light and a shadow, and then we've got flat light. See, little simple things like that can make a world of difference. But I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I think, have that like that. Okie doke, that looks really good. So next, Lorna and I have got to do a little dance, a little swappy round dance. That was really badly executed on both our parts. Camera, now we've already set up the tripod because you don't need to faff around and watch me doing it. Now this is gonna to have to be shot on a tripod because we haven't got as much light available as we did have outside. Obviously you could boost up the ISO, but that's not something I particularly want to do, because I want to try and keep it nice and clean and fine-grained. So I know that tripod's about in the right place. That's quite good actually, just kind of relax. Let me see. <clears throat> I have a little bit of window going on to the right. Abby, can you, a tiny inch to your, that's it. It's the tiniest of movements. That's great. I'm gonna do a shot like this using that kind of side light look. That looks really quite nice. Abby, turn your shoulders towards the, that's it. Your whole body, do a little foot shuffle. That's it, not quite so much, so it's subtle. Shoulders a little more towards the window. There we go. Turn your head so your nose, that's it. Straight at me. That is a much nicer look than the previous one, as I think you would agree. Very different shots, look at that, very different. Okay, I'm gonna do one more like that. Abby, try and look a little human. <laughs> oh, I made you snarl, it's not the greatest smile. That's cool, that's good, that's nice. And do your chin down a little, and that's it. Eyes big and wide, and close your, close your lips together. You don't have to pout, but just close them. That's great, okay. 
What else can we do with that? Well, this is the point, of course, where we say Q, AD the reflector. So thanks ever so much for helping because Adie's come to stay with Abby. They've known each other since they were, well, you were born seven hours after Abby, weren't you? So like they've known each other forever. And Adie's come to stay and volunteered to do reflector duty. Do you remember where we were? Just in here? Uh, yeah. Okay, that's really cool. If you hold that reflector, and I don't know if you can see Lorna, as we, tell you what, right, as we bring that reflector in here, can you see how it is changing the light on Abby's face as we bring in a bit of reflector? So if you could just hold that in there for me, that's great, thank you. Thanks, Aidy. <clears throat> Okay, so now we've just softened the light a bit by using a reflector. Now I'm using a laser light reflector. You could, of course, just use a piece of white card. You could, if you want a strong reflector, just get some silver foil and wrap it around a sheet of card. You know, these are all low-tech solutions. Let's take that one there. Abby, turn your shoulders to the light a bit more again. That's it. Do it with your feet as well. Turn your whole body. Thank you. It's really important to turn the whole body because otherwise you get this sort of twisted motion and it, and it just looks unnatural <clears throat> even though you can't see Abby's body and legs it kind of comes up the spine and through the shoulders so AD can you go a little closer in with the reflector please that's it that's just softening the light that's really nice that's really cool Abby can you go tiny inch that that way that's it not too much I've just got a bit of window frame there we go one like that and turn your head straight down your shoulder straight at me that is the look which I think looks best I think we had a blink I'm gonna do one more here you go brilliant and relax for a mo <clears throat> obviously as I said outside we're gonna shoot a lot more of those so what was my exposure again it's really important to do it through the camera I'm using a tripod to hold it all still our shutter speed has dropped from a 700 and something that it was outside to a 45th of a second. So that tripod is absolutely vital. I'm still using aperture priority. I'm still using f2.8 on the lens. The focal length that I've had to set is about 100, 107 thereabouts. <clears throat> and that's like the focal length I need to exclude the door frame and just get the background that I want. There isn't a right or a wrong. So that's really a really simple guide to getting some quite nice headshots without needing high-tech equipment. I just want to do lastly, do lastly, whatever that means, I just want to go outside and show you a couple of things that are complete no-nos. So one of the things that you certainly don't want to do... Is have the model's hair like this. <laughs> Something which is really quite seriously to be avoided is getting your model to sit like this, straight on for a headshot. Even though we've got a reflector going on here and I'm gonna be shooting it with a long lens. Let me show you what happens. Get down to her kind of level. So I've got brickwork in the background. Frame up my shot, my headshot, and it just looks kind of weird, doesn't it? With that leg, and if it's a bare leg, it almost looks like, you're not quite sure what this piece of flesh is that's sticking up. Avoid it. Whatever you do, don't try and shoot headshots with a short lens. I can hear the question coming. What if I don't have a long lens? I'm sorry, but you do need a longer lens, probably 100 millimeters at least. If you try and short shoot one with a short lens, sorry about this, Abby, you're not gonna like it. Straight to me, please. Turn your head to me. It's going to look like that. I can also hear the next question coming. Yeah, but what if I haven't got a long lens? What if I use a reflector to improve the light? AD, could you bring in some reflection? So we're going to improve the light a bit. That's perfect. Light and lens have nothing to do with each other. They're different things. Look, it's still, even though the light is better, it is still a horrid looking picture. Don't have your model too close to the background. For example, just here, Abby and this background, this window, they're really close together. And if they're close together, you won't be able to get separation. You won't be able to make it go blurry, not even with a long lens. Now, just as a picture, this little sort of Abby on a bench, all that stuff, 
that looks really nice, but as a headshot, it's not gonna work. Let me show you if I take that shot. Even with a long lens, a 2.8 lens, using f2.8, widest aperture, I cannot separate Abby from the background properly. So there you go. You're gonna go and shoot some headshots. Things to remember. Oh, <laughs> she's going. Oh, keep your model away from the background a bit. Think about where you're gonna be. Use a longer focal length with a wider aperture so that you can get a blurry background so that it really, really puts the emphasis on the person. Don't bring knees up in front of their face. Don't have distracting backgrounds. And always oh, think- Oh, awesome. I thought it was too awesome. fucking. <laughs> it was my great auntie. <laughs> oh God, what's the point? Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified each time we upload one of our cool photography videos or for more great photo tips, workshops and training, come and see us at our website, photographycourses.biz.